Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. I have another golf ball review for you today, and this is one that a lot of you have been asking for. I'll be honest with you, it's probably my most requested golf ball review ever, and that, of course, we're talking about the PXG golf ball brand new to the market. PXG has never made a golf ball before, uh, so this is a really uncharted territory here. Uh, I talk about it all the time on my channel. There is tons of competition right now. Direct-to-consumer markets over the last four or five years have really flooded the market. There's all kinds of cheap value brands from Walmart. I mean, there's just so many golf balls. I mean, to be honest with you, there's probably over a hundred different golf balls on the market, so there's a ton of competition. So to just kind of come out of nowhere and randomly make a golf ball. Um, I'm not sure exactly what my expectations are, but let's dive into this and let's see if it is worth all the hype we've heard about. Okay, so let's just start out with the basics here. PXG is a brand that has a lot of loyalists to it. You can't really find them in stores. I mean, you can find their used iron sets and drivers like in Golf Galaxy and stuff, but only used. They don't sell any of them new. Uh, if you want to buy PXG golf clubs, you have to go to PXG's website. You have to exclusively go on there and schedule a fitting through them. And that's why when you meet someone who is a PXG enthusiast, they pretty much have PXG through the whole bag. I mean, from top to bottom. Uh, with that being said, the PXG loyalists have been asking for a golf ball for years because frankly PXG does make some pretty high quality stuff. Uh, they're always well reviewed and to be honest with you they're usually at a pretty good price point too and they offer all kinds of military discounts. There's just a lot going on there. They have a really good marketing strategy and people who love them love them. Just like Ping, just like Mizuno, the people who follow them stick with them and so um, I've seen a few of them on the course myself. I know there's some professional golfers that are getting into PXG so uh, you're, you're seeing it a lot more and so now this golf ball kind of comes into the market that way that if you're someone who is a PXG loyalist and you want to use a PXG golf ball, you know, here's one for you. And you might be saying, okay, well, you know, which one's for me? Well, there's only one PXG golf ball. The whole tagline here from PXG is that one golf ball for all, which isn't uncommon. There's actually a lot of golf brands that already does this. Uh, the one that comes to my mind is the Vice Tour, which is supposed to be for all swing speeds. But a lot of golf brands do this. They try to make a golf ball that's kind of tailored balanced wise, and what I have found in my past findings is essentially that when it comes to these golf balls, it's not necessarily that you'll find uh, they're, they're actually for all golfers. It's more like slow to mid all the way to high to mid. They kind of, you know, they have a middle ground here with your slow being over here and your really fast being over here and it's right here in the middle. So it's a good broad range of golfers. It probably covers 90% of them, um, but there's always some variables there. But that's what PXG is going for. They're going for one golf ball. Um, they don't have any plans to make a cheaper golf ball. They want everything to be urethane coated, uh, which is what this one is. It feels premium, and it comes in at a price point at $39.99 a dozen, but you do have to pay for some shipping unless you order in bulk, so it might end up being around $45, $50 a dozen, um, So, which is pretty standard when it comes to um, the golf ball market. That's about what you'd pay for a tour ball, so I do expect it to perform pretty well. Getting into expectations, though, to be honest with you, let's be let's be real. This is a first-time golf ball from a company that has some pretty high expectations, you know, as far as their clubs, their drivers. Um, so, really, what I'm expecting for the golf ball, I don't expect it to blow me away. I don't want it to have numbers that are just unreal and make me, you know, con convert it immediately, and then I'm going to use this golf ball from now on. I don't expect that. I think that would be unrealistic. For me, I just want it to kind of compete. As long as they can come out this time and compete with the other golf balls and get close to what they're wanting to do, um, I think that would be a win, because at this point, you can build on it every single year and get better and better and better and kind of catch up, which is what a lot of these golf companies had to do. Cut, vice. You know, over the years, they've had to kind of slowly catch up. Um, but if this golf ball wants any chance to make it in the market, especially being more of a direct-to-consumer line, it's going to have to be somewhat decent. But I don't want it to blow me away by any means. I just think that would be an unrealistic expectation. So um, with that intro, that intro is a little long. We don't normally have an intro that long for a golf ball. But, I mean, to be honest with you, this is kind of a first time for the channel and a first time for the golf ball market. So it's, it's really, it's really a, a unique experience here. But let's go ahead and start out the review like I always do. Let's get into the design of the golf ball. And as you can see on the front there, there's that PXG logo. Kind of gives a Top Gun vibe. I really like it. And the people who are PXG loyalists really like it a lot. Um, so you're immediately gonna see that. The font, I mean, everything just screams more you know extreme about it. 
Going on the side there, you can see the alignment tool, which is very simplistic, but honestly very modern. If you're new to my channel, I'm a very big stickler when it comes to alignment tools. A lot of the time, it's the only thing that separates golf balls from each other, and this is really nice. I mean, they have the nice, you know, uh, vertical line there going for your alignment putter, and then also the nice thick line that says Parsons Extreme Golf for your actual ball alignment. Both are really well, both work really well, and honestly, it just keeps it simple. It keeps, you know, it uses the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid, and that's what this golf ball looks like. You have a basic black logo, but it's the logo, the one that all PXG fans are going to know. And then you have a really nice, simple alignment tool. So that's really all you need to do. The golf ball feels premium. It looks premium. It has a nice urethane coating. It feels just like any other golf ball you would get out when you have that nice feeling, you know, coating on the outside. Like you're thinking, oh, this feels premium. This one fits right in there. So that's good. Everything about it so far looks really good. So without further ado, let's go out to the pitching and uh, the putting and chipping green and let's see how we do out there. All right, so I've been kind of working around the green with the PXG golf ball to kind of see how it reacts, how it feels. And I gotta say, we're off to a great start. This is really some impressive stuff here. First of all, I will say the golf ball has a tremendous feel around the greens. I love how it comes off the wedge. Um, there's definitely tons of feedback there to let you know, but it doesn't overwhelm you with being too clicky or anything like that to give you the feedback. It just kind of lets you know by the feel. Um, if you hit it nice and pure, it comes off like butter and there's just a slight firm press. And if you hit it off the toe or maybe a little inside you just get a little bit more of a click it's actually a perfect balance it's a perfect ratio uh, going into as far as the spin I gotta say it actually has a decent amount of checkup it actually has a really good balance there as well because I don't prefer too much spin on my golf balls unfortunately because sometimes like with the Bridgestone Tour B uh, Tour B RXS whichever one it was it spun so much that actually the golf ball was stopping way shorter than I wanted it to um, but on the other end I don't want a golf ball that releases too hard and goes sailing off the other side of the green either and this one's actually right in the middle. It has checkup, it has spin. I'm able to get it to do anything I want to do with it. Um, there's definitely a good amount of pull and tug. It catches the green. The urethane coating is very premium, you can tell. Um, I was actually able to hit cut shots and the ball would go right. I was actually able to kind of turn the face in and get it to bounce left. Um, I kind of could get the golf ball to do whatever I wanted to with it, which was really good, but none of it was overwhelming. None of it was too much to where I think beginners would struggle. I think it is really founding that good balance between all golfers, so love that. Okay. And after working a little bit more here with the putter, I gotta say we're still on a great track. Uh, it comes off the center of the face, extremely buttery, extremely smooth. There's a lot of giddy up there. It almost has the bouncy ball effect. I love it. Um, there is a little bit loud of a click, but it's not loud. It's more like a whisper click, but it is there to let you know, uh, especially it sounds really good when you hit it off the center. I, I love those sounds in golf. It's almost like when the ball hits the cup and rattles around. It's just one of those, those sounds I love to hear. I don't mind my golf balls sounding like golf balls. Um, Really enjoyed that part. If I do hit it off the toe, um, I do feel it in my hands just slightly to let me know that I mishit it, but I actually don't see much of a difference in the roll. Um, some golf balls, if you hit it off the toe or the inside, you don't strike it 100% perfect. You end up losing about four to five feet on your roll sometimes, and that can really affect your upcoming next putt, and you end up running into some three putts. Not here. I only lost maybe a foot or two at the most, even on a miss hit, and that's really good. That's something I look for in a golf ball a lot. Uh, so really impressive from PXG there. They found a great, great uh, balance as far as around the green, tailoring to a lot of golfers. And I gotta say, I was really impressed. This is where a lot of golf companies don't get it right. And for PXG just to come straight out of the gates and have a really good feeling ball with a lot of forgiveness around the greens and some spin and tug as well, I'm impressed. So hopefully these numbers that we're getting ready to get to are also just as good. So we're off to a very good start. And I do wanna say that that golf ball did feel really good around the greens. I really enjoyed it. It was kind of a breath of fresh air. And that, that type of feel really goes into the clubs as well. Nine iron, seven iron, uh, five hybrid driver. Everything I hit felt really good. The ball feels spongy. It has a spring to it, even on miss hits. The feel of the golf ball, there was a lot of care taken into that. And you can tell uh, it's one of the best feeling golf balls I've had. So honestly, I was really impressed there. Without further ado though, let's get into these numbers. Now again, I don't expect these numbers to blow me away, but as long as they can stay consistent, as long as they can be in the ballpark, there's something to build on. So let's see what we got here. So starting out with the nine iron. 
We are looking at 91.4 ball mile per hour speed. That's actually right in line with average. Uh, 126.3, that's right in line with average. 119.7, again, boy, right on the number for average. 20.8, so that's a low ball flight. So actually, I'm getting an average number despite the fact that I'm actually hitting the ball a little lower. Lower launch is going to keep it out of the wind a little bit um, and probably have a little bit more spin too. So actually, I'm really impressed there because even though my distance numbers were average, I imagine I'm getting a little bit more spin there and I imagine that the ball is going a little lower or staying out of the wind so that's actually a plus there even though those numbers are average I would say that actually that's really impressive so so far so good but that is just the nine iron so let's dive in a little bit more here Getting into the 7-iron, we are looking at 6,677 RPMs, which is slightly above my average. That's really good. That means you're going to be able to stick a green with the 7-iron pretty well. Uh, 107.7, that is just slightly, slightly above average, but not by much. 160.6, that's right on the line with average, 149.5. Uh, 19.6. So all average again, but 19.6 on the launch. This one actually launched a little higher. Now I will say that with my 7 iron, I tend to hit a little bit more of a fade. So I probably got a little bit higher of a launch, but honestly, everything's really consistent there. One of the things I noticed immediately about this golf ball is how consistent it was. Um, miss hits were very forgiving. Uh, no matter how I hit it, if I accidentally pulled it, if I accidentally left the face open a little bit, everything was within a five yard range and that's really good consistency. And let's be honest, most average golfers who fall in this realm, if you're watching this channel, um, you're wanting consistency. That's really what you want. No one really wants an extra five, five yards with their seven iron, who cares? You know, seven iron's a finesse club. You know, when you get to the irons, you're trying to finesse the ball onto the green. An extra five yards really doesn't mean jack squat. You want consistency. You want to be able to hit that golf ball and miss hit it a little bit, maybe accidentally go a little out to in and still get a consistent ball flight and a consistent amount of yardage. And I was really impressed what PXG had done there. There's not a lot of golf balls that can do that well. And for PXG just to kind of come in the game and say, hey, we're in that category. This is how it's done is really impressive. So I love that so far. Let's get into the five hybrid. I will say the five hybrid is where the golf ball starts to feel a little firmer. It does start to feel a little firmer. It doesn't feel quite as good. It goes from like, you know, maybe a five out of five on feel to like a four out of five, but it's still really good, but it's just a little firmer. Um, let's see if the numbers are affected by that. We've got 3,617 on your spin, which is below average. Um, I was not hitting the hybrid good that day, I'll be honest with you. So that could be a small fluke. 115.3, I did lose a little bit of ball mile per hour speed there. 190.3, 75.3 um, and then of course we have a launch angle of 13.4 so even though I did lose a little bit of yardage I imagine that's going to stem from the lower launch angle maybe I just wasn't hitting down on the golf ball enough with that club that's also probably why the spin wasn't as high maybe I was kind of blading a little bit and that's kind of easy to do with your hybrid sometimes if you're not used to hitting down on it you end up blading it a little bit um, but I would say all those numbers are really consistent and I would say they're actually all really right in line with what I've seen so far so Again, really good stuff there. Nothing's blowing me away, but I'm honestly, if, if anything's blowing me away, it's how consistent it's been so far. So I really love that. Let's go into the driver now. We got one to go. So come on, PXG, let's go. We got one more. Um, starting off with the spin. Holy cow, 2390? Uh, that is extremely low. I don't know that I've ever tested one lower than that, to be honest with you, 2390. Uh, no, no, it ain't even close. No, that is by far the lowest spin I have ever had on the driver. That's pretty crazy. I mean, I'm not a guy who um, has low spin with the driver. I usually have it up in the 3,000 range. You know, 20, uh, 2794 is actually my average. So to get it that low, that's really impressive, to be honest with you. Actually, it might have actually cost me a few yards because when you swing only 93 mile an hour, you want to get some height on the ball, and sometimes a little bit of back spin's good. But I like the fact that if I have some firm fairways, I can hit it low and watch it go. So... Um, I don't really have a problem with that. It just depends on the course I'm using or where I'm playing it. Uh, 239.7 on the distance, which is just, I mean, basically average. Uh, 137 on my uh, ball mile per hour speed, which there you go. That's way above average. So my ball speed with this golf ball was way above average, but the launch angle I'm guessing is low, which you can see there it is, 11.5 compared to 14.7 is my average. So this golf ball would have normally been going a lot further. I don't know why it was launching low. I know it is a low launching golf ball, um, but I don't know why that is. I don't know why, why specifically PXG wanted it to be that low launching, but that's actually affecting some of my distance there. I mean, I'm going to have to learn. Um, if I was to use this golf ball, I would essentially have to probably open the face a little bit and hit some fades just to try to get it up in the air. But the ball mile per hour speed was excellent. 
um, just the overall distance numbers were average. And anytime you have amazing ball speed and average distance numbers, um, and especially with low, low, low spin like that, it's got to be the launch angle. So I would probably be gaining about 20 yards if I could just get that launch angle up three degrees, which is crazy, but that, that's how golf works. So um, again, a little inconsistent there. It could have been my swing a little bit, um, but overall, I would say that's really good just because of the ball speed. I mean, the ball speed being that high is very, very good. Uh, one of the higher ones I've tested for sure. So Okay, so before I go on too much of a rant there, um, I do want to touch on durability real quick. Everything's been impressive so far. And the same here. I've actually read some online reviews talking about the cover being an issue, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that I had zero issues. I'm hitting the golf ball into a net from point blank range, and you can see the pictures there. It looks phenomenal. It feels phenomenal. One of the things I always like to do is feel the golf ball, because just because a golf ball has some, you know, a visible scratches and visible you know scuffs it doesn't mean it actually scratched the surface so you really got to feel and i don't feel anything that's a really good four and a half out of five on durability maybe even a five out of five depending on the golf ball you're using um, really impressive there which is just as good as i get out of any tour golf ball to be honest with you most of the time my five out of fives uh, are the durlin surlin covers uh, or DuPont Serlin, excuse me, <laughs> the DuPont Serlin or maybe your iometer covers because they're a little bit more durable, but they just don't spin as much. Um, really impressive to see a urethane golf ball have that type of durability. Um, so all in all, that just is another thing that adds to this golf ball. All in all, I'm really impressed with those numbers. You know, I, I didn't go into this with a lot of expectations. I really just wanted the golf ball to compete and honestly it did a little bit more than that it stayed extremely consistent um, it, it played it safe essentially you know it didn't try to do anything extraordinary it just tried to do everything good and it did in fact actually in some areas I would say it borders good great um, which honestly when you're a first-time maker in the golf ball industry that's really what you want and I would say that for an average swinger um, I, I was really impressed to be honest with you the golf ball felt great it checked up it felt great off the putter I mean the short game uh, distance wise everything was just so consistent it was forgiving it was kind of everything you really want in a golf ball without trying to do any one particular thing extraordinary um, sometimes that can get you in trouble you know sometimes I'll test a golf ball and you know the nine iron will be average and the seven iron will be average and then the five hybrid will be like the best distance wise I've ever tested which is cool until you get on the course and then all of a sudden your five hybrid you're smashing it 10 15 yards past the green and you're like well wait a minute what's going on well it's just the way it's compressing this was consistent throughout you could use any club in your bag and honestly get a really consistent performance final thoughts you know guys i touched on it a minute ago i went on a little mini rant there about how impressed i was i am i just didn't have a lot of high expectations i didn't know what to expect i've never hit a, a pxg iron i've never hit a pxg driver i i didn't know what really to expect from anything. I just had no expectations. I had heard from, from you guys, I had heard some of you say that it was disappointing. I'd heard some of you say it was amazing. Rick Shields says it was disappointing. You know, uh, uh, TXG said it was actually pretty promising. There's just so much of this back and forth. I just didn't know what to expect, but I'm here to tell you that you're, if, if you're an average golfer and you've been interested in this golf ball, for me, is it performed really, really well. If you're a really slow swinger, I'm not sure. If you're a really fast swinger, maybe not. You know, I think that's been proven by your guys like Rick Shields who swing the golf club really fast. Maybe they don't get quite as much out of it. Uh, but if you're anywhere in that in-between, 85 mile an hour to 105, 110, somewhere in there, I think you're going to get a lot of success from this, and it's definitely worth a try. Now the big thing is, let's be honest, let's talk about the target market, which is if you're a PXG loyalist and you love PXG and you use all their stuff and you're thinking, hey, I really want to use their golf ball, but I just don't want it to affect my performance, it won't. You are good, my friend, trust me. Uh, the golf ball really did a lot of things right, and I don't, I, it might take some getting used to. If you're used to playing a particular golf ball, you might have to make some small adjustments here or there, but uh, in terms of overall performance, you're good. You're going to be able to switch this no problem, with, and within a couple rounds, really get back on your game, and it's not going to affect it. Um, overall guys seriously really impressive can't wait for the next golf ball review um, I've got a couple driver reviews coming out I've got the Toro response stripe I've got the new brand new 23 Pro V1 coming out I appreciate you all until next time keep watching to keep learning and keep saving thank you